The next item on the agenda is agenda item number five, the text amendment 2014-01. Staff, if you will please present this case. Yes, sir, thank you. Um, we presented the initial draft of the amendments last week at the Planning Commission meeting. Uh, some preliminary emails were sent out to try to collect some comments. And overall, the TRC does have a revised draft to present to the commission that has around eight changes. I think four of them are substantive. And I have a copy for you here that I'm going to pass out in a few minutes. Um, but with that, probably the one change, um, the one comment that triggered these changes was uh, we heard back from the sheriff's office. So we were able to coordinate uh, with them and some of the things they were concerned with. And so we think we've reflected some of those changes here to help. And I'm going to pass this out and kind of walk you through what I think are those four substantive changes to uh, your consideration. typo on the cover page that was fixed in relation to the Lou Bryan concert. Those dates should have been 2013, not 2014, so we amended that. Um, we did hear back from the Sheriff's Office. Once we heard back from the Sheriff's Office, we took those comments again to the TRC to see if we could come up with a draft they would recommend for approval for, and that is the draft that you currently have in front of you, is the one that TRC recommended approval. As far as the notice, um, we sent out some limited emails to staff and some members of the public. It's been advertised in the Valdosta Daily Times. And from this meeting, I plan on sending out at least one more email to the applicants of the special events in particular so we can try to get some, some comments from them. Because overall, right now, we've not heard back from them. And I at least want to try to hear back from that audience. But overall, the substantive changes, if you'll turn over to page two, um, there is a notice requirement that we've asked you built in under section eight. And Now that Section 8 notice requirement, we felt like notice to surrounding neighbors and residents was important, an important part of special events, but we decided to put a number on it where those events that are over are expected participation of about 2,500 people. We put a number on it because we felt like there were some events, like a small race or even maybe a car show, that really are, are so small that they didn't really trigger the same kind of notice that an outdoor concert or something that is expected to be in attendance over that many people who felt like was necessary. So we tried to put some language in there that set a threshold for when do you have to notify the neighbors. We felt like it was important, but we put a limit on it. The next change, this is change number two regarding the fee schedule. Um, ultimately, the sheriff's office, I'm going to say, did not like some of the staff charges we had set up and the vehicle charges, they wanted the freedom to be able to charge um, those charges as they saw fit. So we, we backed those out of the fee schedule and, and just left it as it currently is, which is blank, which is really as needed uh, type of fee. So we backed those charges out. We also came back and the one comment we have got back from our sheriff's office is that they recommended when we have events over 10,000 people they have concerns for outdoor concerts that involve alcohol at 10,000 people. So we had a limit in there at 20,000. And so we backed our 20,000 limit to 10 to make sure it was consistent that when they come in with an event over 10,000 people, whether alcohol is involved or not, they have to get what we've called a preliminary request for a permit. So it's almost like a, uh, a preliminary request to see if you can even apply for a permit that's that large. We did that to try to make sure that the, we had the sheriff's office concerns um, addressed and at least considered by the county manager before we took on an event and started doing the work for an event that size. So we backed those numbers down to 10,000 to try to reflect their concerns and um, recommendations for our, that crowd of people. Um, we also uh, updated the waiver language underneath the fee schedule where you see those uh, items that are struck through, those are our existing waivers. And the new proposed language is basically waivers are allowed at the discretion of the county manager, which reflected that language. We tried to clean that up. 
So we tried to reflect what we currently have in operational procedures as well as to try to address that language in that way rather than going with the more technical language we have proposed. So we tried to address that there with the county manager. And then finally, the last substantive change that I spoke of, but just as listed, is on page five under section E. And you can see it relates to that preliminary request at 10,000 people. So what we've done is we've taken those four main substantive changes. You had the first one on special events and notice, 2,500 people. You had the fee schedule and the waiver from the county manager updated. And then you had the 10,000 people reflected in the ordinance instead of 20,000 people. These are really, um, the main thrust was to try to accommodate some of the comments we got back from the sheriff's office. We were glad to get those. We wanted to try to consider those. And so far, these are our results uh, as of this afternoon. Um, we did get these through the TRC. They did recommend for approval. And so what I'm asking for is, uh, if you do feel like you're ready to move forward tonight, a recommendation. If not, then I'll ask for uh, just, you know, if you want to vote on a recommendation on tabling that takes some additional time. But if you're ready to move forward based on those changes, we think you're, you're ready to move forward tonight based on them being advertised. All right, thank you, staff, for presenting the, uh, the text amendment and the changes. Are there any questions for the staff? Yeah, and that's a that's a fair point. It really was something where we cut our fees off at about twenty five hundred. When we had an idea for notice, we don't currently um, have a requirement that the promoters contact the residents in the area. We normally ask them to and they sent them a letter. This kind of formalizes that, and it's just something where, based on TRC discussion, it's just something where we felt like where we should draw the line at a bigger event versus a smaller one. That's something that's absolutely under the authority of the Planning Commission to recommend for a smaller number if you saw fit. But our, our idea was the last concert we had for Ms. Prime was we capped his ticket sales at 17,000. So I mean, they, they've grown. But you're right, if that person was smaller, sir, I, I believe it was closer to 5,000 than 2,500. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I just think they, they've consistently gone to thousands of people. But if you feel like it's more appropriate for a smaller number, that's just where we as staff settled out. And it's not a changing thing. It's just letting people know, look, I'm going to take a vacation. <laughs> yes. It's, this, week, this weekend or whatever. It's trying to give the neighbors some notice that there's an event that might disrupt their normal their normal activities during that time. Okay. Second question is, I was just curious what the sheriff's form had to do to set the fee. If you... Is that just... Uh, if you were to ask for a deputy to work an event, mm -hmm. then through the sheriff's office, they would say, you know, they would either agree or disagree. And they would say, here's how much you can expect to pay per hour. Typically, these events are overtime type of events. The last time we did Luke Bryan, the normal county fee for deputies, including engineering and fire rescue, code of work staff, was 20, was 25 so that's what that for each per per hour per right. personnel. Yeah. And that's the reason I was wondering why they had to fly the following fee. Well, how did you establish that? It's not that it really matters. We for the filing fees which are separate from personnel. So we <coughs> felt like the taxpayers should not have to subsidize the event with all the extra personnel that were involved with an event that size. So that took care of personnel for the night. What we didn't have a fee set for and we haven't charged any money for is for a person to apply for this event and for us to do all the homework and the planning and organization that we do to make sure that we're ready for it they can do that and basically they they were not charged for all of our work which in some cases was weeks if not months of work to try to get ready for these events so these fees were something we felt like were justified based on the amount of preparation we had to do as staff because it is a team normally from an administrative standpoint Carmelo Braswell the zoning administrator is kind of the point of contact I would say that it's really heavy on fire rescue and inspect well. Fire rescue and engineering are probably the two heaviest county departments beyond the sheriff. 
you really have a lot of involvement from their inspection and they're making sure that you have proper ingress, egress, and safety and traffic control. So I would say that really was us trying to justify the expense for our time. I plan on contacting them specifically, but not yet. I haven't contact. I haven't gotten a hold of their promoter yet, but I will. Is, is there four contact? You can get around the month in June. Yes. Normally, about normally we start hearing from them. Um, sir, for an October concert last year, July. We, we, we heard from them in July last year. He was wondering when we heard from the promoter. Um, we normally, for their October concert, we started our planning in, in July for their October day. Right. Are there any other questions uh, for the staff? All right. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this? Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in opposition to this, this text amendment? There being none, their discussion is now open amongst the commissioners. I mean, we our original our original number was was one person. We just we just felt like at a small event, it's just not necessary for notice. There are some events that really are very quiet and are done fairly soon, but other events we felt like you, it's a good courtesy to be a good neighbor to, to do notice. Well, if, if, if I may, I, I would just echo that in the, this is this is temporary facilities. This is not at established That's venues, and I kind of like the option of one. Let people know something's going on that, that there's an event because these are all going to be unique in and of themselves. And like fifteen hundred. That's Still a good number. You know, so 1,400 people show up next door for an event, and I didn't know about it. Let's <laughs> see. And I guess you're going to base that on ticket sales. The only way you can do it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you say, oh, they're here. We messed it up. So, may I ask, Jason, mm -hmm. um, why did you feel that there was a need to put a number on that? Since before, there was no mm -hmm. number to use. What, was, what drove that? Some of the regulations we've looked at in other cities and counties have different levels. Obviously, a bigger event has more requirements and regulations and involvement. And for for us, we have you know we have a range. We have smaller events like races, car shows, um, sometimes even maybe a corn maze, you know, a corn maze type of event. And then we have our larger events, which typically have all been outdoor type concerts. So I'm, I mean, I'm open. I think we're we're open to a smaller number. We just felt like, you know, when they submit us an application and commit to a number and saying we're expecting a participation of, you know, 500 people, that 500 people might be spaced out over a three day. You know, there might be a corn maze who comes in for. A month who says I'm expecting X number of people to participate so that might be spaced out over a number of days rather than just like a concert where it's all at one time mm -hmm. so that was some of it too where the corn base might have 2,500 people but they might be spread out over a month and a half mm -hmm. 
So there was some consideration given for that. They, they have to tell us how much they're expecting. Some events are all one time, some events are more spread out. So we, we just pick that as a lower number based on our experience. For example, Lou Bryan, they pretty much know. They know in advance they've been sold X number of tickets. And then that number grows as it approaches the time. Yes. I still think within that week's time, once you get a number, you can you know, not uh, use that for example. They may be an exception because they know that they can get a And if you hit a threshold and initially it was 500, then you hit a threshold, whoops, we done gone over our balance or 50, whatever it is. We need to have courtesy of love and know, look, we've messed up. We don't really have 25 people. Sure. But there's some way to do that. I don't think. All this is the courtesy for the, for the neighbors is. and the stuff, and I think that's a, that's a good courtesy to have. All right, if there's no other uh, discussion, I will entertain a motion from the commission. All right. <laughs> okay. okay. I heard, uh, heard one while ago that said uh, I it would be good. That does sound a little bit, if it's going to be a small event, uh, 100 or 200 people, In a second, is there any discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman, just so I understand, basically it's recommendation of approval with the condition that that notice requirement back down to 500. Okay. There's some kind of language to be put in there, even if they submit to you that there's going to be 400 there, mm -hmm. and they establish there's going to be 1,500 there, I'm still trying to make an opportunity to notify within like a week's time or something mm -hmm. like that. If you know within a week, you don't have time to notify them. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, all discussion has been made. All in favor of the motion with the uh, corrected amendments to that. Um, do so by raising your right hand. All right, the text amendment passes unanimously.